Coming up on today's show, US President Biden signs an executive order calling for 50% of all new cars sold by 2030 to be zero emission, but manages to completely ignore the impact Tesla has had on the EV marketplace in the process. Volkswagen boss Herbert Diess is heavily critical on Twitter of the European Ionity network that Volkswagen helped fund, and pro-fossil fuel ads run on Facebook plague people's social media feed in an attempt to kill electric cars. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to TEN, Transport Evolved News. It's been another busy week here, so let's get on with it and run down the week's important EV news. This show is sponsored by the Electric Auto Association. Stick around until the end of the show to find out how joining the EAA can help you finance your own clean energy or transportation purchase. Before we get going today, I do have a little correction from last week's show. In it, I said that the fire at the Tesla Megapack facility was in South Australia, and it was in fact in Victoria, which is in Southern Australia, but not in the state of South Australia. We are sorry for getting that one wrong. On Thursday this week, US President Joe Biden held a special press event at which he signed a new executive order designed to get 50% of all light-duty vehicles sold by 2030 to be zero emission. The term zero emission in this case includes hydrogen fuel cell, battery electric and plug-in hybrid vehicles, and the White House announced that the big three Detroit automakers, Ford, General Motors and Stellantis, had all signed on to the target. But mysteriously missing at the event was Tesla, America's current largest producer of electric vehicles. The reason? The event was as much about union workforce jobs as it was electric vehicles, and Tesla is of course famously anti-union. We made a video about it earlier this week, and you can see it by following the link below. Back on July 1st, New Zealand officially launched its new incentive program for electric vehicles, and after just one month, it's been responsible for a massive spike in interest in plug-in vehicles. The Freebate program pays a subsidy of up to 8,625 Kiwi dollars towards the cost of a brand new electric vehicle, or 5,750 Kiwi dollars for a new plug-in hybrid. But it also offers free baits for those buying a plug-in vehicle on the used car market. During the month of July, 760 purely electric vehicles and 431 plug-in hybrids were registered. In July last year, a total of 483 plug-in, hybrid and hybrid electric vehicles were sold, showcasing just how much of an impact this new program is having. If that doesn't prove that incentives work, I don't know what does. Talking of sales, Ford Motor Company shared its July sales figures this week and, as with many other automakers, demonstrated a noticeable drop in new car sales as fears about COVID continue to run deep and microprocessor shortages affect new car production volumes. That drop, almost 31% year-on-year, is bad news for Ford. But interestingly, there was one success story – Ford's electric and electrified models. Plug-in and hybrid electric vehicles expanded their market share, with the Ford Mustang Mark E and Ford's F-150 Power Boost Hybrid leading the sales figures for the month. The Mark E has become one of the quickest selling cars in the US this year, with 12 days average between them arriving at a dealer lot and them going home with their new owner. Hyundai has just announced a new subscription service for UK customers that allows them to subscribe to a brand new hybrid, plug-in hybrid or fully electric car for a period as small as three months. It's certainly not the only automaker to look at subscription-based ownership options. Volvo has been offering subscription ownership for some time now, but this is the first time Hyundai has explored the option for its customers. Prices start from as little as £339 sterling per month, with everything included, including insurance, scheduled maintenance, repairs and UK road tax. For those who aren't sure yet an EV will suit their needs, this could be a great way to borrow one for a few months to see if it's for you. So while it won't be for everyone, it's good to have choices. 
Dr. Herbert Dies, boss of Volkswagen AG, has undergone something of a transition over the last few years. As we've covered in last week's show, that transition has seen him loosen up his public image quite a lot. But it's also seen him become a pretty strong EV cheerleader. This week we saw just how much when he lambasted European charging network Ionity publicly for having too few charging stations, poor amenities and broken units. Hitting out on LinkedIn, Dees said, quote, This is anything but a premium charging experience, Ionity. End quote. Something that we're pretty sure many of our European viewers would agree with. But what makes this particularly amusing is the fact that Volkswagen, along with BMW, Daimler and Ford, were the automakers responsible for founding Ionity in the first place. Yeah... Last September, Tesla announced a major deal with Piedmont Lithium that would see the automaker use the mining specialist to source the lithium it needs for its battery production facilities in the US. At the heart of the deal was Piedmont's new North Carolina lithium mine production facility, a location that not only has one of the best deposits of lithium in North America, but would have also given Tesla domestic sourced raw materials. But this week we learned that Piedmont has now announced it will have to delay the first shipments of raw materials to Tesla and doesn't have a date at which deliveries will begin. Part of the problem lies with local opposition to the facility, which we understand Piedmont doesn't yet have state approval to establish a mine next to. While we'd rather not focus on the aftermath of accidents on this channel, knowing how to safely deal with an electric car that's been in a collision or other emergency situation is an essential skill for first responders. And that's why Volvo has just donated a brand new XC40 recharge to the FDNY to help it train its firefighters and EMTs on how to safely deal with an electric car and its occupants in an emergency situation. The vehicle will form part of the FDNY's training program, ensuring that first responders become more familiar with how electric vehicles operate, how to safely isolate their battery packs post-collision, and what to look for and when to cut when preparing to rescue occupants from inside a stranded vehicle. There's currently no requirement for fire departments to train with electric cars, although more departments are doing just that, as knowing what to do can be the difference between life and death, quite literally. Tesla has long been the champion of charging speed, with most modern electric cars struggling to get anywhere near as high a charging speed as Tesla's V3 supercharger-compatible cars. Last week, we mentioned that the Mercedes-Benz EQS might have a lower peak power level than a V3-equipped Tesla, but according to Inside EVs, took less time to charge overall thanks to a higher sustained charging rate compared to any Tesla. Now it looks like the Hyundai Ioniq 5 is also after Tesla's crown, with an executive from the company telling Automotive News this week that the Ioniq 5 will dominate Tesla in terms of miles of range added per minute. The company recently demonstrated a 10 to 80% state of charge of the Ioniq 5's battery in just 18 minutes. Food delivery services have become a common part of life in the 21st century, especially in the age of COVID. But paying someone to deliver food to your home is not always the most carbon-friendly option. And now Indian food delivery company Swiggy, which has been delivering food to Indians for more than seven years, is trying to tackle that by trading out some of its delivery motorcycles and mopeds for electric ones. In its of the busiest cities, Swiggy has been using pedal cycles for some time. But in areas where longer distances need to be covered, the humble moped has long been a mainstay. Its ultimate goal is to make the 800,000 kilometers of deliveries made every day, that's about 497,000 miles, all electric by 2025. Stellantis, the world's third largest automaker established after Fiat Chrysler and PSA combined forces earlier this year, has announced that more of its brands will go fully electric. It's already committed to its Fiat brand going all electric by 2030 in Europe and, as part of its joint agreement with Ford and General Motors in the US announced this week, will be aiming for 50% of all of its US vehicles being zero emission by the same date. But this week it said its DS Performance brand will only launch all electric models from 2020 24 onwards, far earlier than it had previously planned, and that the Alfa Romeo brand will follow suit by 2027. This means that Fiat will now be the third Stellantis brand to dump the pump and shows just how much the group views electric drivetrains as integral to its very survival. 
General Motors published its second quarter results this week, beating analysts' predictions with record-breaking revenue, but simultaneously failing to meet the expected earnings per share. Although GM adjusted its expectations for the year upwards, part of its reason for the lesser-than-expected earnings was the Bolt EV recall program, which GM predicts will cost it upwards of $800 million. That said, it did reinforce its commitment to expanding its electric vehicle programs and announced two new commercial vehicles that will hit the market in the near future. The first will be an all-electric cargo vehicle similar in size to the Chevy Express, while the second will be a mid-sized vehicle that GM says will be offered with both an Altium-based drivetrain as well as a hydrogen fuel cell drivetrain for longer distance use. When we know more, we will share. And now it's time for Short Shorts. Tesla has agreed to pay a $1.5 million settlement with owners of certain 2019 Model S cars after the company limited the performance of their batteries in the wake of a Model S fire. The Australian state of Tasmania is issuing a second round of grants aimed at expanding the island's electric vehicle rapid and destination charging infrastructure. Samsung SDI may now be under contract by Volkswagen to produce the company's in-house designed prismatic battery cells for the company's new lineup of EVs. Chinese media sources are saying that automaker BYD will be providing Tesla with BYD's blade-style LFP batteries for use in upcoming Tesla vehicles. Tesla does often buy batteries from other manufacturers, but as of yet, hasn't confirmed nor denied the story. EV startup Arrival has successfully completed its first real-world test of one of its delivery vans operating entirely autonomously, without a driver present. Thanks in part to incentives available within the province, drivers in Quebec are now for more than 45% of all electric vehicle registrations today in Canada. A study by Bosch e-bike systems, so not exactly an unbiased source, finds that more than one half of all Brits would consider buying an electrified bicycle, with more than a quarter saying they can see using their car less if they had an e-bike. EV tractor manufacturer Solec Track has announced a new model. The E70N has a 60 kWh battery pack, the equivalent of 70 horsepowers, and a narrow design optimized for vineyards and commercial farms. Arrival is partnering with Microsoft on the development of an open automotive data platform designed to manage and mine data from commercial and fleet vehicles. Rivian has applied for permits to create a 129,000 square foot vehicle delivery and service center in Orange County, California. For a third time and second month in a row, more new electric vehicles are registered in the UK than new diesel vehicles, though petrol is by far still the largest in terms of figures. Russia has announced its plans to subsidize up to 25% of the cost of a new electric car, as long as it's made domestically, as the company tries to jumpstart an EV production and adoption range. Honda has launched a low-cost electric scooter in China. Featuring removable battery packs in both a sportier and more economical variant, it should be an attractive option in the competitive Chinese e-scooter market. The first 100 Tang SUVs from Chinese automaker BYD have arrived in Norway and are being prepared for delivery to owners. It's a big deal as Chinese automakers try to build a presence in Europe, and who knows, maybe America is next. In the months since opening reservations online, Ford has received 20,000 orders for its e-transit work van, a strong showing given the market segment. General Motors is planning two more battery cell production plants on top of those previously announced. It is not clear at this time if these new plants will be built in partnership with the troubled LG Energy Solutions, with whom GM says joint ownership of its Ultium battery platform. With orders from a variety of Chinese and international vehicle manufacturers, battery supplier Esvolt has closed its more recent funding round, having secured just over one and a half billion US dollars. The Canadian province of British Columbia, which has the highest per capita rate of EV adoption in the nation, will be installing 94 new high-speed DC fast chargers to make travel within BC easier. After years of delays due in part to the COVID-19 pandemic, Indian electric motorcycle startup Ultraviolet is reportedly readying its F-77 bike for launch. In a move similar to the one that made Norway its global leader in EV adoption, India is waiving registration fees for electrically powered cars, scooters and motorbikes. One week after the indictment of its former CEO, Nikola Motor has announced, surprise surprise, that it will just deliver one half of the electric trucks it had planned to this year. 
in a move aimed at incentivizing British owners of its plug-in hybrid vehicles to drive on electrons, BMW is offering charging credits for every mile driven on EV power by owners of certain models. And no, the i3 Rex isn't one of them. Volkswagen plans to introduce its new ID.5 GTX at the IAA Munich Motor Show this September. We still think the term SUV coupe is rather ridiculous, but we're excited to get behind the wheel of Volkswagen's newest, more performance-oriented electric offering. The cost to buy a new Tesla Model S long range, the entry-level model of Tesla's premium large sedan, has gone up again by another US$5,000, meaning the base price has increased by ten grand in just one month. According to a report by the American Clean Power Association, renewables of battery storage power accounted for 78% of new power additions last year. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. I am sure that you're all aware of the trouble that Facebook has found itself in over the past few years as it allowed malicious adverts designed to wage massive misinformation campaigns to flood everyone's social media stream, all while lining its own coffers. Facebook found itself on Capitol Hill for those particular transgressions, but now it appears the company is doing the same thing, but this time by allowing paid misinformation campaigns from pro-fossil fuel groups. According to third-party social media specialists Influence Map, pro-fossil fuel ads were shown to people on their Facebook timelines a total of 431 million times last year alone. The goal of such ads? To delay the shift away from fossil fuels and to stunt the growth of renewable energy and EVs. Big oil isn't going down without a fight. And... Finally, Rivian may have found itself suffering the same challenges as the rest of the auto industry this year, namely chip shortages and other COVID-related delays. And as you probably already know, it has been forced to push back the launch of its R1T and R1S to September from last July. But this week, it showcased the reactions of the first reservation holders it's invited to its normal Illinois production facility to try out the production R1T and R1S for the very first time. These customers will, all going well, get their vehicles in just over a month's time, and it looks like they had a thoroughly good time testing out just what the R1T and R1S could do. A big part of the video Rivian published to celebrate those first drives was the big EV grins that everyone had. And frankly, I think the world needs more of those, don't you? And on that note, we are done for the day. But before I go, I want to thank the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's show. They have been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967 and firmly believe our future depends on us making the switch to clean, green electric cars today. The EAA can help you find someone near to you that can help you make the switch to electric. It can help you become an EV educator and it can point you in the direction of monthly meetups for like-minded EV fans. And if you become a member, you'll gain access to a new clean energy and EV loan program set up between the EAA and the Colorado Clean Energy Credit Union. You can find out more by heading to electricauto.org. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to this channel, hitting that bell, and doing the same to our two other channels as well. That's Transport Evolved Take Two and Transport Evolved Shorts. We would love you to support us through Patreon or Ko-fi if you're so inclined. And don't forget that you can buy your own TE swag through our Red Bubble store. The link is below. And of course, if you're feeling chatty, drop by our free to join Discord room. I or someone else in the team will be back soon with more great video goodness. But until next time, thanks for joining me. Keep evolving!